Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live. Welcome to Wednesday's Recap. So again, we're going to go home this weekend or this weekend today on hump day and the headlines will be new all-time high for a lot of the markets. But I will say today was a weird day, you know, weird day for a lot of the stocks that we look at, a lot of the high beta names, a lot of things opened up uh, pretty strong with the, you know, the GOP win of uh, the Senate and just kind of faded. I know for me, I came in pretty light. I just had some Bank of America and um, some BABA from yesterday's earnings that was strong and also some, some Apple and uh, did a few trades here and there. And thank goodness I didn't you know, overdo it because it feels like a lot of guys didn't have as much success as they would have liked because some names that looked okay yesterday aren't, didn't look so good today and, and vice versa. And you know, it's getting a little choppy, even, even among sectors and amongst commodities. So let's just start running through some of them. You look at the spiders here though, You'll see, you know, here you go, the V bottom, the bottom that everyone hates to love or loves to hate. And then this is when we triggered above that area. You had your gap up. It was defended. Then we took back the 200 day. And then look at this gap and go, gap and go. Did it refill this? Did it fall apart? No. Was it feeble? Was it a dead cat bounce? Uh Uh-uh. Had power. Continued up into prior resistance. And then what happened? We gapped up above it. Did it fail? Was it a fade? Was it a trap? No, it held. And now we've continued all the way up to where we are now. Yesterday, you did get a little bit of a, of a, you know, a partial fill of this gap, but you, know, you traded below the pivot of 200.77, came back above it. Then today, pretty much <laughs> we closed where we opened and there was not much opportunity, but you, know, you look at the chart and still above all the moving averages and the spiders look pretty good. As traders, you try and figure out the speed, the action, what's cooking. And uh, I know a lot of guys were trying to short the spiders because the IBB was a bit weak. Sometimes that doesn't work. I know the IBBs let us up, and, but you know, they've also come a long way. So you look here and um, trying to interpret what this means doesn't really mean that much. It means if you're trading the bios, be careful. If you were looking for active trades, it's been better to be short than long. Here was that outside day where it opened up and failed. Here, never reclaimed half of it, traded below the prior low, and then today, you know, couldn't get back above and closed pretty weak below the eight day. So um, at this point, you know, some momentum has been lost, but uh, again, strong sectors pull into the eight and 21 day, and sometimes they even retest prior breakouts. So does this weakness in the bios mean that everything else has to come in? No, but you know, it's, if you bought and chased it, it probably hurts a little bit. If you go to your retracement rules on to figure out the commitment from the lows here, and the lows were right here, up into the high, um, what have we pulled back so far? <laughs> still, every spoiled bull out there, we've only pulled back 0.25%, which is still very, very strong. You could pull back to the 0.382% and still be strong and be above the 21 day. So I just think because how fast we came up and how quick, you know, everyone's expectations get a little bit skewed. When you go to technology, what did you do today? Um, you know, not the cleanest bar, but it also, um, you know, here traded into the gap with the spiders, is off the lows, but not on the highs, and, you know, just not a perfect day. It's not always going to be a perfect day. You know, this was your gap and go here. Here was another gap that gave you a three-day range before gapping above this. It's above prior highs, above all moving averages, just another day. Um, the XLF, I would say it was a bit stronger. Um, at highs, but uh, it should be with the dollar so strong and everyone thinking that the Republicans are going to be a little easier on the banks. Here is your two-day trade below the the 200-day. The S&P took four, so this is a stronger sector. Here you had a nice gap up that was never even tested. Same thing here. And then this was your recent one, and now it's looking good. Let's go into that sector real quick. Um, Citigroup, you know, it kind of blows my mind a little bit how this one is back at highs um, or right near it, and this is the one that took the big write-off and has some, and, and it's had some bad news, but it's been tracking the eighth day. I'm actually in Morgan Stanley, and I don't know why. So, you know, maybe there's something out there. There'll be some kind of news, and then once it's out, it acts better, but this hasn't been acting better, but you have a, a pivot here that at some point, if it takes out 35 and a quarter, it can make its way back up to the highs here uh, at some point. Goldman uh, still flagging. Closed red too, you know, it's just things amongst this sector is a little weaker, so it is what it is. Bank of America, I'm also still in that. This, this is back at highs and looks good at some point. You know, I'd love to see it extend through this 1750 and get back up to uh, the 1803 area. 
So now as far as high beta tech, a little weird today. You know, you had Baidu gap up with Baba. Made sense. Follow through. Third day. What do we do on the third day? Do we add? Do we go bulls in? No, we, we trim. And if you did that, it didn't really matter that Baidu, you know, came in. And if you look where it is, you know, it, sometimes it does happen, okay? You had your uh, reversal on earnings here. You had your breakout above a prior pivot there. You had it hold higher above the eight day. Then today gapped up and then couldn't hold above this pivot. So 235 was your sell. Some people might have even looked for a cute short saying, look where this came from. But it's still above the eight day, still above the 21 day, still a strong stock. But today it was weak. Um, another stock that I think guys lost money with was G-Pro. G-Pro is $65 pre-earnings. Okay, had your gap and trade. The next day was a better trade, and then you had your push-through failure, which should have told you a rest was due. Did anyone figure that, you know, it would give back this entire uh, day? No, I know I wouldn't have, but I wouldn't have been long it either. Okay, this was, um, you know, your gap. Remember it held two days ago. Nice little clear of a pivot. Traded through this and failed. So as a, a short-term active trader, I would have said, okay, this needs a rest. If it breaks below halfway of this bar, I would be out of the way because it's showing no commitment to the recent strength. But I'd give it a little bit of a pass because I'd be like, eh, you know what? Look where it was prior to the earnings, which was at 64. But no way are you buying this whole way down back to the gap. And, and if it was a really strong stock, should this happen? No. Those are momentum rules. Mobley, a lot of people also belly aching and crying about this too has been you know just a, a a sloppy sloppy stock you know it was following a nice trend until it broke the 21 day gave you a little clue right here on this outside day when momentum failed and then since then there's just been trades in here but i think more people are losing than making so you know don't over trade this one as far as baba baba opened up gave you a nice trade i was out of my uh my equity probably around 109 i'm also out of my my uh, call spread um, it's been a great, great trade since breaking above this downtrend here and holding above it. Once it cleared 92, we said people could start chasing, and it did. And then all of a sudden, you had this nice little flag, and there's your earnings move. So now you have a doji here. I'd love to see it flag again. It's amazing how many people out there on Twitter, you know, uh, expect perfection. They're like, Red Dog, are you pissed that you had a call spread versus straight up calls? Because I, I bought the hundreds. I think they were like three and a half. And then I, and I sold the 105s for about $1.70. So in, in actuality, I think I paid close to, uh, you know, just eight, $2 even, a little less. And then it gets capped out at five. So you two um, plus, you know, you get three. I, it was less than that, right? Three, whatever it was, was I thought it was closer to $1.80 in my cost. I, I mean, it's been a long day. But anyway, still 150% besides being able to buy it yesterday while it was red, the equity, and then s hold it all day and then sell it green. That's what the VTF saw. So that and put 150% in, in a weekly option trade underneath your belt. And, you know, sometimes that happens. And it's good when that happens. And if you have a thesis and execute on it, good. But, you know, was I upset that... My $3 options, I could have sold perfectly today at 10 or 11. No. You know what? If it was wrong, I would have lost. It, would have, it is what it is. Do what you're comfortable. Same way I wasn't upset yesterday when I was short the spiders. It's amazing, the Twitter sphere. I was short the spiders from this little doji, and I covered at like 200.60. And everyone's like, oh, look at that. It's at 200.06. You, you know, you, you, you're selling yourself short. It's going to hit the eight day. It's going all the way down to here. I'm like, you know what? I stole something here. I'm not a good short. I made a dollar or so, and I'm moving on. And then today, I didn't hear for a word from any of them. So the bottom line is don't you know, listen. To your, your, your Twitter community is great, and there's so much good value added there. But there's also a lot of noise. There's also a lot of people caught. There's also a lot of people. You know, misery loves company. You ever hear that statement? It's true. Because unfortunately, human nature doesn't like when people succeed if they're not. You know, maybe they should work a little harder. Maybe they should do th some things different. And, you know, for me, I talk about glass half full because I think it's sturdier than looking at it half empty that's shaky and cracky. You know, so just, you know, take that thesis moving forward. So, you know, continuing on. So today with Baba, um, I'm going home flat it, first time in a while. Let it base here. And then perhaps above this 100, we get another juicy trade higher. Do I think this is the higher of the year? or the historic high on Baba? No, but we'll wait. And then um, you go to social media land and, you know, hard, very hard. I came in yesterday thinking I want to short 
Facebook and Twitter, two things that I don't do well, two stocks that I've made a lot of money buying, but it made a little sense and they both didn't work. I got away. I didn't get stubborn. And then today, people came in and said, oh, wow, these look great. They both gapped up and they started buying them and they never saw an uptick. It's frustrating. Now you look at Facebook and, uh, you know, what are you, you going to say here about Facebook? Um, you, what do you have here? It failed at the gap. Once it went back below the prior high, that could have been a sell signal. And then it, it closed pretty red. You know, you have a, a somewhat of a, a, of a bear type flag type H pattern. If you say this is the pole and this is your H, right? That looks like an H. Um, if you're shorting it into that strength, congratulations, you're good at it. If you're waiting for momentum, I guess wait for the next time it tries to break this and perhaps you do get that or lower. But this is very sloppy and not easy to deal with. So don't trade it heavy. Twitter the same way. Twitter, I actually shorted this yesterday. Instead of looking for a red dog reversal down here, which is what I would usually do, but I tried to be cute, lost money, and then today it opened up, didn't hold above the prior high, closing the lows, and now maybe next time it tries to break through this, it does fill this gap. Ultimately still big gap, unfilled, lots of moving averages over it, technically weaker for momentum stock. I, you know, I like to be in things that are above the 8 and 21, 8 and 21 day trending like this. You don't want to be in these high valuation stocks that are, have broken trends and below these moving average for more than a trade unless they repair. And this one is far from repaired from this or even from this. So at this point, be very careful. I'm not exactly sure what Tesla's doing after hours as it was all over the map. But, um, uh, you know, I, I saw it come out. At, at first it looked weak and, and then you know, broke this 220, went down to like 217, and then all of a sudden it looked stronger, and then they said their guidance was down. I don't know which way to interpret it, but I guess uh, if it's out there now, it, it only makes sense to be long this if it stays and holds above 245, but after hours it's hard to deal with. I think we'll revisit it tomorrow. Um, Solar City, this too people gave me a slack. The, you know, on this Red Dog Reversal, I think I sold it, you know, right here or something like that, and I'm like, ah, oh, God. You know, they're like, oh, into the moving averages, or laggard trade back to resistance, and then it came off. I think after hours, the earnings looked like they only lost a cent versus losing a dollar. So I guess it's viewed as better. We'll see how it looks tomorrow. Um, you know, in commodity land, um, I lost a little money trying to buy a bounce in gold. First time I've done that in a while, but I figured everyone in the good world hates it. It has another huge gap after some people probably thought maybe yesterday was a green light for a Q trade, and it didn't work. Um, Gold uh, closed on the dead lows. Lost a little bit of money trying it, but I didn't just play the accumulation game. I'm not even going to get into this chart because I've showed you many times on how you know you had this pennant break. Uh, oops, sorry, uh, up here, okay, right around 160. You know that was step one. Just be aware if you don't want to get out of it. Okay, don't get out of it, but it's weaker. Step two came in right here. You had every opportunity to sell at 150, which is about $1,500 an ounce. If you you know, if you're listening to the ranters, to the end of the world guys, to whoever it is you listen to, this is all you had to listen to when it broke 150. So huge consolidation, multiple year support broke, you get the frick out of the way. And then you had a move lower, and then another whole big range happened again. You know, you had a, another area here around 115 after breaking its tr triangle. Same type of triangle, doesn't this look familiar? Triangle here, you know, cheat and get out of the way, and then definitely be out of the way there. Same way, cheat and get out of the way. Lower high here, and this is your get out of the way, get out of dodge. And then today, closing the dead lows, you go to the weekly chart and see where um, major support comes in. I posted this chart. You can check my Twitter feed. And, um, you know, it, here's where it broke out from, around the 100. And then you also have, you know, support here around the 104. Um, if you were shorted, you know, I wouldn't be a piggy piggy and stay shorted, especially if you shorted it here, shorted it there, shorted it there, shorted it there, shorted it there. You know, who knows, like the ECB tomorrow, if they um, do come out and do some kind of QE, which I don't know if they will or won't, this thing could be up, which would be bad because it'll take away the trade that people want for a bounce, but there's no need if you've made a lot of money short to stay there short. Just, you know, don't need to catch the juice. The juice gets slippery at times. Um, but I have no position, so who am I to say? These are just my thoughts, which I've been saying for a while, which kept a lot of my firm out of this, you know, and hopefully some people short. We'll see. Silver, also, no love. Um, it's amazing. This does have some industrial qualities. I remember when guys were caught in this pain trade. Wow, look at that. Doji, boom, there was your close, lower high. Been in a downtrend since. No light of day. 
This broke also some key support right here again after breaking the same key support that the GLDs did at 150. This did it around 22. And uh, let's see. It looks like it's getting cheap, something you could start buying a three-tier system. I would at least say get the hell out of the short, you know, but from the long side, still not really showing you that you need to be long. It, it gave you a small trade today, but then failed. Um, but that's that. You know, oil bounced, but it's a little bit different. Oil came off um, the lows, and uh, at this particular point, I don't know if, if this was just a cute trade, you know, to fill the gap, or if, if this was it. I probably don't think this was it, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, we talked about covering your shorts at least into 76 and crude, um, not to buy it. So if you, at least you covered your shorts, you didn't get caught in today, you know, which is better than, you know, being caught in today, I guess. Um, but still below all the moving averages, filled the gap a little bit better than gold did. So um, um, if you bought gold because crude filled its gap, you probably were a little upset, but it happens. Another divergence that we're dealing with in the market. And, um, you know, th there you have it. Uh, today was not an easy day. I'm not saying every other day was an easy day because all these days are long and they test your patience, they test your discipline, they test um, your mental capacity because it's very easy to lose money. It's very easy to short early and not cover. It's very easy to short, make money, and not cover and lose. It's very easy to buy early, think you, you know, you're buying a dip, it turns into a bigger dip and then you sell it and then it bounces. Lots of easy ways to lose money if you lose your discipline, and especially if you revenge things. That's the last thing you want to do. You know, do a little less. Pick your spots, make some money. At, at lunchtime, you should be out at the gym. You should be blowing off some steam. You should not be sitting at your desk, banging your head against the wall. You know, I know I'm in every day at 6.30. I'm writing my morning note, putting together a game plan. It takes me an hour to do so. Some people buy it as a regular all access. Then I do my video with Brittany, which is a lot of fun. But that tells me and re refocuses my attention on a visual versus writing it. And that two hours worth of prep that is a product is what I need in order to be you know, prepared for my day so I know my level so I can act quick. Um, so if you're not preparing for your day, <laughs> the same way I understand, but maybe take my preparation. It's not much, you know, it's, that, it's there for you, but you should be doing something for, you know, the morning. If you show up at 915 and think you're going to know how things trade and where to put your attention, chances are you're not going to have success. You have to work at this. You have to be prepared, and you have to be mentally tough. And with all that said, hey, all-time highs. Congratulations if you're an investor and you have a plan, and congratulations if you've been making money trading because there's been a lot of things to do if, uh, you know, if you're prepared enough to take advantage of the action and disciplined enough to, to have stops and, and follow your rules. Have a good night.